I want you to welcome Jeffrey to give us a scripture reading today. Amen. Um, our Bible scripture is from Matthew 1, 20 to 23. From verse 20. But while he fought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Amen. I want you to put your hands together and welcome our brother Chuku to give us the next scripture reading. from Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. <clears throat> For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Here ends this reading. Keep clapping, amen. Now I want you to clap even harder as we welcome the dancing stars.
that's roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Yuletide carols being sung by a choir and folks dressed up like Eskimos. Everybody knows some turkey and some mistletoe. Oh, yeah. 
Get the heart. 
Father, thank you for 2017 Christmas Day. Thank you for the blessing of life. Thank you for the blessing of faith. Thank you for the blessing of hope. And thank you for the blessing of a church and a gathering in your name, Lord. We give you thanks. We give you praise. Let your perfect will be done in this service today. Thank you for the blessed opportunity that we have to be in your holy presence. I give you thanks for salvation, for healing, and for saving us, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Take your seats. And Merry Christmas to all of you. Sure, 2018 Christmas will still be together. Serving God, believing in God. Yes. Beautiful. Hallelujah. Um, thanks for making an effort to be in church today, isn't it? It's not nice to be in church. Nice. Made an effort to come to church on Christmas Day when there are no buses, no trains. I don't know how you came, but God will bless you. Yes. Whatever is taking you to be here, may God bless you. And may you have nice cars that you own yeah. Yeah, next year. May you be driving your own cars. Yeah. And may some of you be driving into church with your wives and your husbands. Yeah. And some of you be driving into church with your wife, your husband, and your new baby. Yeah. Because are you receiving it or you don't like it? Yeah. Next time I say, you'll be driving with your wife to church. Yes. It shall happen practically for you. So, God bless you all with your good efforts. Dancing stars, God bless you. You've been dancing all year round. God bless you for even dancing on Christmas Day. You know, when you were dancing, I had a thought that I think I should take you out for lunch next Sunday. So, That is. Oh, yeah. Sella is invited. Sella is invited. That is for those of you who danced on Christmas Day. Okay. Yes. You have to remember that. It's for, <laughs> it's for those who danced on Christmas Day. And you don't have to. You don't have to bring your purses and your wallets. When your, when your father takes you out, you don't pay. He'll pay for you. So open your stomachs wide. Next time you see me, it's free lunch. Okay? That's my Christmas gift for you, for dancing all year. And especially dancing on Christmas Day. Beautiful. So next time you want free lunch, you should join the dancing stars. And you should, you should dance on Christmas Day. Yeah. That's where the blessing is. You have a, a member who doesn't dance. I'm always wondering who she is. <laughs> anyway. She's the manager of the people. Okay. 
be managing. <laughs> Matthew chapter 1. Today is Christmas Day. I told you short service. That means short sermon. Were you blessed by the songs? Yes. Beautiful, isn't it? So Matthew chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 16. It says that, And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. May your children be blessed. Amen. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David until carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. Verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. I don't know what you would do if your beloved tells you that she's pregnant. And then she asks, it's by the Holy Spirit. I can imagine you religious guys. I can imagine how you put your nose in the air and say, hmm. Hmm. Mm. Anyway, verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to, pay, to put her away privily. They are waiting for my comment on this verse. <laughs> I'm thinking what you're also thinking. That sometimes people's mistakes is like a test to you. And it shows who you are and what you are like. Because all along, the Bible has not described Joseph as a just man until his beloved appeared to have made a mistake. Then he was called a just man. May you do the right things when people make mistakes. Amen. Yeah. There's food for thought, isn't it? Yes. yes. So think about it. Those of you easily crucify people in their mistakes. Yes. You shouldn't crucify people in their mistakes. In the so-called mistake of Mary, the Bible described Joseph as a just man. How he handled Mary, how he handled her, how he handled her, quietly, decently, not exposing her, not embarrassing her, because he was a just man. Hey, hey. verse 20. I refuse to change my message. <laughs> but while he thought on these things, <laughs> While he thought of these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. This is a very important verse. Christmas is not about shopping, you know. In fact, I think this is the first year that I've been irritated with the city as I walk around and see people doing things. I just felt some irritation. It didn't last for a little while then. I bought ice cream to cool myself down. Yes. But I just wonder that these people, they don't believe in anything. They don't believe in anything. They don't, they don't believe in anything. They don't, they don't even care two hoots. 
Do you understand two hoots? Mm. Bum, bum. <laughs> it, 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 they don't care. They don't care. They, 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 they don't care. And yet, at the birth of the Savior, the, the, the rush and the whatever, it's as though they care so much about him. But they don't care. And he died. He, he will not died. He was born to save his people from their sins. Okay, let's read on. Verse 22. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord, by the prophet, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, then shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. The birth of Jesus is the visitation of God to the world. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. How many of you accept your wife if an angel appears to you after all that she has done? Nobody? You would accept her? Are you sure? Are you sure? And knew her not. Do you understand you her not? You understand that one, isn't it? Okay. You are wonderful people. You don't understand a lot of things, but some things you understand. And knew her not. So she had brought forth her first son. And he called his name Jesus. He called his name Jesus. The child was called Jesus. They called him Jesus. That was his name. So, the title of my message today is Who is Jesus? Because when the child was born, they called his name Jesus. That was the name of the child that was born. So that you, a believer, when you are celebrating Christmas, you must have a different interpretation and a different meaning, you know, for for the day. Because I've seen a lot of Christians who get depressed around Christmas. They're depressed because, like, you don't have this, you don't have that. My beloved is not around. <laughs> I don't have a beloved. I don't have this. Different things. People, people even, people even, pla- people even, pla- I mean, it's like, it's like it's Christmas. I've not fornicated, so the Christmas is not working. <laughs> but it is a very, it is a, you see, Christmas, it's not about techies. It's not about techie. At all. Have you seen a turkey in the Bible before? <laughs> Somebody has made it about turkey. Why is it about turkey? So we have to know what it's about because when the child was born, it's the birth of a child, and that child was called Jesus. Jesus. That was the name given, Jesus. So who is Jesus? Who is he? Who is, who is this, this Jesus? Who is he? Who is he? Because when the child was born, it's a special name. A special name that was given. Not, not Techie. It's not Techie that was born. Or new shoes. Or... Or oh, iPhone, iPhone 8. Mm. Or oh, iPhone 10. Yeah. So if it is Christmas, you're expecting someone to give you a gift, iPhone 10. <laughs> Receive iPhone 10.
who is Jesus. In other words, who is this person that was born? Who is this person that was born that hundreds of years after there is still reason why a secular almost pagan city like London comes to a standstill. People who don't believe, they, 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 can't, they, can't, they can't stop believing. Do you understand? They don't believe, but they can't stop believing. It's like the name has such power and such effect that everything still grinds to a halt. Everything. Everything. There's a mad rush. Friday was frantic Friday. Saturday was confused Saturday. Yesterday was finishing off yesterday. And today, it stopped. It stopped. Someone was just asking us whether we're thinking about our food. Oh, I won't lie to you. I am. <laughs> How right you, I am. <laughs> I don't know why you aren't, but me, I am. I am. I am. I'm thinking about it. I am. <laughs> now, if I tell you I'm not, I'm lying. I am. I am. I am. Because yesterday I didn't eat well, so bye. By four o'clock this morning, my stomach was waking me up and said, Look, you are hungry. You must be eating. So, I me, mean, I am. Even before we left him, I was asking people that you didn't finish cooking. <laughs> <laughs> because, see, I was, I'm planning when I get home, I now have to wait for people to finish. So I was telling people. But yesterday I saw that you had started, but you didn't finish. You should have finished. So when I get back, people, I was asking people, people have made themselves managers in the church. <laughs> they should have finished. <laughs> they should have even said that, oh, can I stay so that I finish off? Oh, they have come here as managers. Anyway, very quickly. We need to finish uh, the service quickly so that people, people started. They didn't finish. They went to sleep. <laughs> Number one, who is Jesus? Number one, Jesus is the son of man. Matthew 16, 13 says that when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? In other words, I'm a human being. So who are people saying that this special human being is? So he is as he is. He, is, he, came, he came into the earth in a legitimate way as a human being. He, he, didn't, come, he didn't come to cheat. Jesus, he, he didn't cheat. He didn't break protocols. He didn't come like, you know, I'm not, I'm not one of you. He came. He was, he, there were times that he was hungry. There were times that he wept. There were times where he, he slept. I mean, he's a normal human being. Normal, 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 normal human being. He's the son of man. Son of man. Son of man. There, there, are, there are other beings that are not human beings. I believe it now more than ever. Now I believe it more than ever. That there are people who are not human. And some of them are even in churches. Yes, now I believe it more than ever. More, more than, more than ever. I used to believe, but yeah, but now I believe it more than ever. And when one day we teach, we preach, I preach about it and show you the traits, you will see that you also believe it more than ever. But they are round, but they are not human beings. And they are very wicked. Wicked people, wicked. Destroyers of beautiful things. Anyway, it's Christmas Day. It's the son of man. It's a human being. Number two. 
Who is Jesus? Jesus is a great prophet. Luke chapter 7 and verse 16. So the first is that he was a normal human being. Number two is that he was, he is, was a great prophet. Luke chapter 7 verse 16 says that, And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God has visited his people. When you, when you encounter a prophet, when you encounter a prophet, one, one, one of the offices and the callings that you, you must admire maybe, and maybe you must pay attention to is the office of a prophet. But when you encounter a prophet, more than, a, more than any of the offices, you, would, you, encounter, you encounter real supernatural power of God. You, you will see that God, God is around. If I, you end up saying God is real, God is real, God is true, God is true. God is, God is a real God. Even he's a powerful God. Amen. Because, Lord, when the prophet speaks to you and says this to you, I'm telling you, it's even scary. What he says is what it will be. What he says is what it will be. When you see a real prophet in operation, you won't joke with him. Because what he's, what he's saying, what he's telling you, whether, whether he's huffing or puffing or he's talking as though he's tasted spices. You understand? People talk as, as though the, the, there's hot pepper in there. And, and sometimes those things make you, it's like you feel more, you're more impressed by the... By the paraphernalia of a prophet. <laughs> but some of them, and the, and the very part, they are very casual. But as they are talking, as they are speaking, what they are saying, it's as though, it's as though there's a radio in their head that is playing what to say and what not to say. With direction to give. So when these people say, a great prophet is risen up among us, and they look at the next expression, God has visited his people. God has. That was, that was Jesus. That was Jesus. The name Jesus, this is what it means. A prophet and then a visitation from God. God has visited his people. God has come. Anybody who is saved, who has received Jesus, has encountered God. You, you actually have God in operation in your life. God has entered your life. God has entered your life. God has entered your life. When you have Jesus, you have God in your life. It means that God is now involved in your life. So you see, sometimes some of us, we play down on what we have. We play down on our salvation. Is that we are saved, but then we, we play as we live as though some other powers are greater than, than salvation. When you're a believer... There are some things you shouldn't suffer from. You are not expected to suffer from them. You are not, you are not supposed to entertain them because God has visited you. What the person you have received is a great prophet to bring direction. Do you remember the woman at the, at the well? She said, I perceive that thou art a prophet. I perceive that thou art a prophet. I perceive that thou art a prophet. Because you are somebody who knows things, who sees things. You are someone who provides direction. You give direction. You bring, you bring about direction. When Jesus is in your life, a prophet is in your life. The power of God is in your life. Dire you, you will never lack direction. You will never lack direction. You will never be lost. You should never be confused. Because a great prophet is involved in your life. Number three. Uh -huh. Who is Jesus, isn't it? Uh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's who he is. Jesus is the way because no sinner can enter into heaven without going through him. So you see, that name that was given to the child Jesus 
what is being announced to the world is that a son of man is in the world. Number two, a great prophet has been birthed. A great prophet. Number three, the way to heaven has been provided. The way to heaven has been provided. The way. The way to the father. The way to restore our relationship with the father. To go to the father. To talk to the father. To enter into it. To have eternal life. That way has been made. That's why he was called Jesus. You, were, you, have, you have a name because of your grandmother. In case you don't understand what I'm talking about. Your name, the reason for your name is because of your grandmother. Or because of your mother. Or because of your mother's ex-boyfriend. Which she never told you, which she never told your dad. She just said, Oh, I like this name. But it's her first crush. Hey. Or maybe your mother uh, admired some movie star. Denzel Washington. So she, she's trying to call you Denzel. Ask the, re- the meaning of our names. We are just leaving it. Maybe you should ask, I mean, why did you call me Denzel? What's the meaning of Denzel? Before you become like a Hollywood actor, at least, I mean, he's a Christian anyway. Denzel Washington is a Christian. But you ask, you ask why, 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 why my name Denzel? Where, where did it come from? What does it mean? Do you know what it means? Yes. You were called Jerry, Jeremy. You say you are, you are, Jer- you are not Jeremiah. Yeah, Jeremy. <laughs> Went with him to Botswana. This brother called Jeremy. And Bishop was preaching. I'd introduce him to Bishop. Oh, this Jeremy, we've come from England. This. So Bishop was preaching powerfully, powerful quotes and prophecies from the book of Jeremiah. So as he was preaching there, he just said, where is, where is Jeremiah? Where is he? They, because they are twins, it's, easy, it's not easy to make them out. So he said, ah, which one is Jeremiah? Then he was standing there, Jeremy. <laughs> and, then, and the bishop said, Jeremiah. Then he said, no, it's Jeremy. It's Jeremy. The bishop said, Jeremiah. He said, Jeremy. The bishop said, is it not the same name? Then he said, no, mine is Jeremy. I'm Jeremy. Jeremy. Look how we pondered him. We watered him. So then Bishop just said, okay, sit down, Jeremy. Sit down, Jeremy. Take your Jeremy like that. Take your Jeremy. Take your Jeremy. Take your Jeremy. I mean, a blessing was coming his way. And he was standing there saying, it's Jeremy. Jeremy. It's Jeremy. (laughs) Jeremy. Look, for almost five minutes, that bishop is trying. I mean, he has paused his message, trying to offload a, a prophecy to this guy. And he's standing there telling them, It's Jeremy. It's Jeremy. I'm Jeremy. It's Jeremy. He said, Is it not Jeremy? No, it's Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy, sit down. <laughs> I'm explaining the name of Jesus to you today. The name of Jesus. That he wasn't called that accidentally. Was he called that accidentally? He called Jeremy. <laughs> he wasn't called. It's, 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 not, it's not by accident. He's a great prophet. And he's, he's also the way. The way. He is the way. 
He is the way. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. That is Jesus. Amen. It's not because someone's grand, granddad. Yeah. Number four. You know we have to finish. Number four. Jesus is the son of God. Yeah. He was called the son of man. He's also the son of God. That is why, that is why that pregnancy was explained that is because the Holy Spirit had come over here. Not through, not through sexual intercourse. He is, he is part God. He has the nature of God. He is the son of God. He is the, he is the firstborn. Firstborn of God. Firstborn. We, we are the other children that have come in through faith. He, he, he is God walking on the earth. That is why his blood. That's why your blood can't save anybody. Your blood can't save anybody. Your blood can't save anybody. Your, your blood is your father and your mother. He is God. That's, that's how come his blood can save us. Right. His blood is pure. And his, and his, his blood is pure. And it's also, it's also, his mother was a virgin. Do you understand virgin? Virgin is purity. Purity. Pure. Pure. Pure person. Those of us who gamble with virginity these days. Virginity, it's a, it's a very important quality. As a Christian, it's very, very important. I don't, I don't care what happens in Europe. I don't care. Do you think I care? I don't care. I care about what the Bible says. Do you think my, my standards are European standards? I don't care. I have more respect for the barking of a dog than the opinion of a European about God. I have more regard for that. I'd rather, I'd rather listen to the dog barking and say that the dog is hungry or the dog is happy to see its owner or maybe the dog has seen a stranger. I'd rather try and think why is this dog barking than to, than to stand there for two seconds and listen to the, to the opinion of a European about God. It's toilet to me. It's rubbish. It's dying. Oh, Jimmy said virginity is not important. You are lost. You have lost your way. You have lost you, 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 you are the confused one. Just that God is merciful. That's why He keeps us. He keeps us gradually with your games and your lies and your deception. And your effort, your effort to lie and deceive. It's just, it's just God's mercy. It's just God's mercy. That's why he keeps you around. Not, not that it is okay. Don't be a twerp and think it's okay. It's Christmas Day. <laughs> Who is Jesus? He's the son of God. He's the son of God. He's the son of God. That's why his blood is pure. That's why his blood can. That's why nothing can wash away our sins. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood. It's only the blood of Jesus that can cleanse us. Nobody's blood. Your blood can't wash anybody. Your blood. Go and break, go and break your thumb and use your blood to wash your face and see if your sins are gone. Play games from January till now. Perhaps let today, let today help you to say, you know, this name Jesus. It seems to be a ser- more serious than I thought. More serious than I thought. 
Because it's not, it's not about church membership. It's not about, it's not about being a member of a church or I'm known by the church. It's not full of us think that because the pastor knows us, so you are righteous. Hey. Check other Bibles that are trying to become um, a bit worldly or friendly. You, you see key terms that they try to subtract. Key terms. Key terms. One of them is a virgin. They will say young lady. A young lady is different from a virgin. A young lady. How can a young lady be a virgin? It's not possible. Let me, let me make an altar call. Every eye close, every head bow. And all virgins come to the front. And see how many will come. And there are no old women in this church. Protect your virginity. Both male and female. Then don't bring in new definition. Don't, don't become a technical virgin. Do you, do you understand? I mean, boxing, we have knockout, then we have technical knockout. Then don't, introduce, don't introduce terms into the. Don't introduce terms. Yes. On a scale of one to ten, I think my virginity is intact. I'm around five or six. Listen to a carol recently. I can't remember which one it was, but one of the, it, it talks up. It talks about the virgin birth. One of the lines is that he was born of a virgin. I, I realize that it's changed. They've changed the words. Yes, they changed the words to what, what do they even say? Either a virtuous lady or something. So they use some English English words. They, it's changed. And this one was being sung by a gospel choir. Something gospel choir. Gospel choir. Gospel choir. They were singing. And they have changed it. The original one. The original one says virgin. The virgin lady or virgin whatever. They changed to something virtuous or some. It's like some nice girl has given birth to Jesus. Some nice girl. <laughs> Jesus is the son of God. Number five. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. If you genuinely have Jesus, believe in Jesus, you'll be walking in the light. All your ways will be full of light. All your ways will be. You see, be careful when you feel like I can turn him off and turn him on. I can turn him off and turn him on. The moment that you turn him off, you are in darkness. You are lost. I mean, you are lost. Pray that you are not, for you, you don't die in darkness. Pray you don't die in the darkness. John 14. Is it 14? John 8, 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. When you have Jesus, you have light. You have light. You see clearly. You see better. You see better. Those of, those of you who were a certain way, were all sinners and were saved. I think they are, they, are, they, are, like they are shades of gray. I think they are shades of darkness. Yes. One pastor was helping his sheep to do a book review. And he chose a book like Shades of Grey. He said, that, that's what the pastor is doing with his sheep. Yeah. A certain pastor from somewhere. Yes. A certain pastor from somewhere. That's, that's what Not the Bible. Not the Bible. Not how to be a strong Christian. No sweet influence of the Holy Spirit. Is that let's read. You see, pastor or pastor. I'm talking about pastor, not Christian, pastor. And his sheep. 
Ti. This is a book that they were discussing. This is, this is what they discuss. When they are discussing, this is what they are discussing. No verse. It's Christmas Day. <laughs> I am the light of the world. It's the light. So you see, you will see immediately if you have Jesus, you will have light. Your judgment, your perception, even if the person is called Pope. And he starts offering you evil things because Jesus is the light. He should be able to see through, see through, see through, see through the wolves in sheep clothing, see through them. No matter how nice and cozy he feels, because he feels nice, isn't it? When you're getting all the attention over stupidity, it feels nice. Oh no, come on, are you not human? It feels nice. It's nice. But Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. He came to give light to the world. When you encounter Jesus, you see clearly. You see better. You receive, I mean, your judgment is better. Your perception of life is better. When you have Jesus. When you have Jesus. When you have Jesus in your life. Your attitude towards life is better. You see, you see how you see how foolish you used to be and how wise you have become. How many of you can see that? You can see the difference. Because Jesus is the light. It's by Jesus. It's not by it's not it's not because of your parents. It wasn't because of it's not because of it's because of the light of this world. Jesus is the light of the world. Number six. I feel so blessed. I'm enjoying this message. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? He's the light of the world. Who is Jesus? He's the way, the truth, and the life. Who is, who is, who is this person that was born and he was called Jesus? Who is he? He was a great prophet. A great prophet. I mean, till today, the words he spoke are happening. To date. To date. You can take his words and explain who you are. Ooh. Number six, who is Jesus? Jesus is the resurrection and the life of this world. The resurrection and the life. Is it there already? 1125, John. He is the resurrection and the life of this world. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me Though he were dead, yet shall he live. It's Jesus who gives us life. It's Jesus who gives us life. It's Jesus who gives us another chance. In Jesus, there is another chance. Though you were dead, yet shall he live. That is, I am the resurrection and the life. He, it, it is through Jesus that you can say, I am born again. I am born again. It's like life is beginning again. The resurrection. You were dead. You're dead. Yet shall you live. You will live. Amen. I said you will live. Amen. I said you will live. Because this Jesus that you have is the resurrect. He carries resurrection power. Amen. And he's the life. He's the one that will give you life. You will live. Amen. You will live. Amen. I say you will live. Amen. He's the one that gives, he gives us chances. Amen. Hey, he will give you another chance. Amen. He's giving you another chance. Amen. Watch him carefully. He will not, he's not, he, he, won't, he won't resign on you. He will give you another chance. Amen. He gives chances. He's the resurrection. When you die, he will resurrect you. He will say, hey, 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 come. Come out of your slumber. He'll give you another chance. Receive many more chances. Amen. Who is Jesus? Number seven. Who is Jesus? 
Jesus is the good shepherd. 10, 11. He said, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The child that was called Jesus, he is the good shepherd. Shepherd is pastor. He is the good pastor. He's the good pastor. That's why he gave his life for you. That's why he gave his life for you. A good pastor won't train you in pornography. No. No. A good pastor will rather sacrifice things for you to do well. He will sacrifice, he will sacrifice things. Why, why do you think pastors' children like to click together? Especially when, when their understanding is not broad. They like to talk as though because it's as though we don't, we don't, we don't have our father. We don't have this. It, 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 it's, it's a temptation of pastor's children. They always feel deprived of something. It's because a good shepherd lays down his life for others to be saved. Just that when they grow up a bit and they mature, they see that what they have is very good. They discover that they are rather the privileged ones. And the blessed ones. May God bless all pastors' children. May your future be perfect. Say, I am the good shepherd. Because he he laid down his life for the for the sheep. He he, he died, he sacrificed himself. It's like I'll give you my very life. I'm giving you my life. I'm giving you my life. That's a good shepherd. He loved the people. He loved them. He loved them. You came to church to know God, to grow in God. So if somebody is rather guiding you in the opposite direction, let it enter your coconut that you have, you have met a wicked spirit. That's what I'm telling you. That there's, people are spirits. Who, they, you, you may be thinking that I'm, I'm joking. People are spirits. Somebody will give you another theological explanation for that. People are wicked spirits. Kept to know, how can the person be guiding you back to something you've run away from? You even ask yourself, have, have I met a human being or what? Because even the person is called Pope or Archbishop. The person is called Vatican. He's a good shepherd. He guides you. He will guide you. Amen. Jesus will guide you. Amen. Jesus will shepherd you. Amen. That's why you can confidently say that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because he's guiding you. He's gui- because of Jesus, don't be afraid. Amen. I said because of Jesus, don't be afraid. Amen. Don't be afraid. Amen. Sometimes the path of life, sometimes the path of life is through valleys. When you find yourself in the valley, don't be afraid. Don't get scared. Don't freeze. Don't get paralyzed. Sometimes the path, the route, the route. Do you remember God guiding the Israelites out of Egypt? I mean, you said we should flee from this wicked man who has chariots and all these things coming after us. The route you've chosen for us. What is in front of us? A sea. And we can't swim. How did we get here? So you said that you can't blame those people when, when they were complaining because I don't know what you would have done if you were there. <laughs> that someone said, I mean, can you imagine Moses has gone to call a cow? I'm taking you out. God is speaking to me. I'm a prophet. God is speaking to them. When they arrive, the sea, do you, have, have you seen the sea before? The sea, when you look in front of you, you see the sea. When you look to your left, it's sea. When you look to your right, it's sea. Behind you are your enemies. And he says he's leading you. He says this is the way. <laughs> Look. Sometimes the path of life is 
very, very, it appears very dangerous. That's why the psalmist said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And the only time he was saying that is because he has a shepherd. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Jesus is a good shepherd. He's taking you to a good place. Don't look at your current situation to judge your life. He has a good plan for you. There's a good plan for you. I said, there is a good plan for you. You'd be amazed. And finally, who is this Jesus? He's the savior of the world. He's a savior. He's a savior of the world. He's not a turkey or a Christmas tree. He's the savior of the world. He's the savior of the world. John 4, 42. And said unto the woman, now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. The Savior of the world. The greatest thing you can be saved from is not a tsunami, or an earthquake, or fire, or water. The greatest thing you can be saved from is your sins. It's your sins. If anything can destroy a man, it's his sins. That's the name of Jesus. To save us and to give us eternal life. God bless you and Merry Christmas. Stand to your feet. <laughs> Father, thank you. Did you, want, you just want to thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the name Jesus and the person Jesus who saved us. Just say thank you to him. Thank him. Just thank him. Just thank him. Just thank him. He's our savior. He saved us from our sins. He saved us from our sins. Best of all, he saved us from our sins. He cleansed us from all our sins. From all our mistakes. Best of all. Best of all. Best of all, he saved us. He saved us. He saved us. He saved us. Greatest of all, he saved us. He saved us. He delivered us. The greatest of all was salvation. Salvation. Thank him for Jesus. And please say thank you for your salvation. Please say thank you for your salvation. That he didn't leave you in your state. He didn't leave you in your sins. He didn't leave you in the mud. He didn't leave you in the old life. He took you out. He took you out. He saved you. He washed you. He cleaned you. He cleansed you. Oh, malaba shata laba diba kapa laba hatayata. Father, we gather today on Christmas Day to say thank you for giving your only son, Jesus Christ, to come into the world. Thank you, Lord, for the name Jesus. That is our salvation. Who is our savior? Who saved us from our sins and saved us from all our mistakes. Thank you, Father, for this great provision and great blessing. In Jesus' name. Every eye closed, every head bowed, still in prayer. I want to pray with you. I don't know you're here. Maybe somebody invited you to church today on Christmas Day. Deep in your heart, you have no relationship with God. You don't know God. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You want to say, Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus today. You want to say, Pastor, pray with me. I want a relationship with God. I want to have a relationship with God. I want Jesus to be my Savior. I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. If you're here like that today, maybe you used to go to church, but you've lost that relationship. Or today's your first time, second, third, whatever it is. You'll say, Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus today. 
on Christmas day. I want to begin a new walk and a new relationship with him. If you are here like that, please lift up your right hand and I'll pray with you. Wherever you are, just your right hand. Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to Jesus today. Just your right hand. Very quickly and I'll pray with you. I'll pray with you. Pastor, pray with me. I need Jesus in my life. I need Jesus in my life. Just your right hand and I'll pray with you. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Just your right hand and I'll pray with you. You say, Pastor, pray with me. I need Jesus. I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. Just your right hand and I'll pray with you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, thank you. Thank you for salvation. And thank you for your blessing. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray, Lord, if there be any amongst us sick, Lord, by the name of Jesus, may they be healed. May healing come into their bodies now, Lord. May healing come into their bodies now. I rebuke sickness. I rebuke disease. I rebuke that which disturbs their peace, Lord. I rebuke every diagnosis by the doctors, Lord. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I declare that report shall not stand. Thank you, Father, for healing today, Lord. By the name of Jesus. By the power in the name of Jesus. I command pain, go. Swelling, go. Discomfort, go. Recurring condition, go. End today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for healing. And thank you for your blessing on Christmas Day. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for saving us. In Jesus' name. Amen.